Hello everybody. So this is the part two of the experimenting with chat GPT using the geoscience data. So today I'm going to use a single LAS file and see how does chat GPT responds to it. And if I'm able to get some useful information out of this LAS file. In the next part, I will try to use uh, multiple LAS files and see what can we do with it with them. So let me first uh, set the context for chat GPT. So I'm going to say that, uh, uh, for example, you know, think as a geoscientist. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so it is asking for a last file, which I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the public data set which is F03 and there are four wells. Uh, I've exported it out of uh, uh, Open Detect. I'm going to use this uh, file for example and I'm going to drag and drop into the chat GPT. So once it is ready to be analyzed, you know, you, you will see this kind of symbol here. Right? You can press enter. So it is trying to import the LAS IO library, which obviously is not present within the chat GPT. So you can see the error here, you know, this, this error, it shows you that uh, there's error importing the LAS IO library. So it's going to revert to pandas and uh, matplotlib for analyzing and also displaying the file. So let's see what, it, what does it do. Okay, so it is analyzing the file. It is analyzing the blocks of data in the last file. It has picked up the log names. And it has given me a kind of a data frame, you know, logs that are available in the file. So as you can see, it started with the LAS IO, which is the library available in the in the Python. But obviously, it was not able to find this. So it reverted to using pandas to uh, analyze the file. Okay. And uh, it is now analyzing it. Okay, there are some errors here and there. But overall, it seems that, you know, it has done a good job. It is able to, you know, break out the file into different sections. For example, this is the version information section. So it has broken it out separately. You know, it has uh, understood that uh, you know this is a separate block of data in the last file. From there, you know, it has gone to the well information section, right? And then it has gone to the curve information section. So you can see it has picked up the curve information section very well. It is. Uh, it has seen that it has depth data, uh, and additionally, it has the the density, gamma ray, and the porosity, and and the sonic log information. So these are the mnemonics that it is the, on the left hand side are the mnemonics and on the right hand side is the description. See it has picked up this information here which is very nice of it to be able to read the blocks of uh, last file without using the last IO library right and then it has also you know given me kind of a uh, kind of a data uh, data block or data frame. Okay, and this is kind of using the same order, I believe. Uh, after, so, Ruby, Gamma Ray, Prosity, and Sonic. And Ruby, Gamma Ray, Prosity, and Sonic. Yes, so it is using the same kind of order, right? So, I'll ask it to plot a Ruby data for me. So, I've asked it to display the Ruby log for me as we do in the petrophysical applications. So let's see what does it do. As you can see, it's using matplotlib to plot it because it does not have the last IO library. Okay. So and remember, you know, sometimes it, it generates this kind of log, you know, which is a kind of a dynamic log, you can say, right? But obviously, it will not show you the log the way we are used to seeing them in the geoscience applications. So the trick is actually to go here, right, and switch to the static chart. And then you will be able to see the data like this. But obviously, this is uh, not what I expected. So as you can see, you know, that uh, Roby is going to, you know, like a lot of negative values, right? And uh, if I look at it, you know, 
if I look at this data, so Ruby is uh, the second. So this is Ruby. Uh, 99.25 is the null value, right? But otherwise, you know, Ruby values are, uh, you know, like two and above. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to tell it to, you know, plot only, let's say, the positive values in the Ruby log. So I've asked it to filter out, you know, the negative values and only display the positive data in the Ruby log. So again, you know, it is uh, doing the same thing that it is plotting. It is on a dynamic scale. So let me say, you know, so this is more like it. This is uh, this is seems more like the log that I am expecting to see. Right, and uh, you you can see that there is a you know like a icon here where you can expand the chart. You can download the chart also as PNG file. Right, let me expand it, and you can see it in a in a better scale. Right, so it is it's been able to do quite a good job. And prostate log, if you remember, was uh, being called POR log. Let's see what it does. So again, you know, it has shown it in the dynamic chart. I'm going to switch to the, okay, it is doing, uh, I think, a good job because the depth is increasing downwards, uh, starting from maybe 200 to 1400, 1500, and the porosity log is in the unit units of fraction, which is okay, this seems okay to me. So, you know, uh, okay, but see, it always try to display the data in the interactive chart rather than the dynamic chart. So I'm going to, you know, ask it to uh, redisplay this, you know, in the static form only. I'm not sure it's going to work or not, but let me try. Let's say if it uh, follows the instructions or not. If not, I'm uh, going to move ahead and uh, record it as a as a shortcoming kind of. Okay, so again, it did not understand what I am trying to ask for it, but uh, it is able to, you know, display the prosty log if I uncheck the interactive chart. So uh, not not a bad idea actually. So I'm going to actually now uh, ask it to display all the four logs side by side. Okay, and let's see. How does it do? So I'm asking it to display all the logs in different panels and using a different color for each log. I'm impressed that it has given me the correct data actually. It is able to pick up the values correctly for, uh, for depth. They are increasing downwards in meters. Ruby value seems to be very well defined, you know, within the range that I'm expecting it. Gamma ray similarly. Porosity is also in fraction, so that is correct. And DT and sonic log. This is very good. I'm, uh, it's quite impressive. Uh, display the, let's say, uh, Ruby and uh, porosity log in the same panel. Let's see if it understands the instructions. Okay, so again, it's ignoring my uh, request to display them in the static form. But uh, let's see if it, uh, uh, it does a good job actually. But it is showing them not probably in the correct scale.
So I'm trying to create the kind of uh, Ruby and Prosty log display like we are used to seeing in the applications. So let's say if it is able to understand. That's very good. It has completely understood. First of all, it has not displayed the logs in the interactive format. Secondly, it is you know displaying them in an overlapping fashion like I'm expecting I, I expect them to see in the petrophysical applications. Right, so the porosity is in fractions and that's very good. And the Ruby is at the bottom, the scale is at the bottom from two to uh, it's very nice. So let me go back and uh, let me see if I can create a cross plot among these two uh, logs. So I'm asking it to analyze the porosity and uh, density log relationship. This is only a single file though, remember that. But uh, I would like to see the density, let's say, you know, on the vertical axis and porosity on the horizontal axis. I am not seeing the labels to do that. How does it respond? Okay, that's very good. It is now displaying the the labels on the y-axis for density log and also the porosity log on and at its uh, units on the x-axis. But I want it to display the Ruby, you know, decreasing upwards. So I'm going to explicitly ask it, ask it to do that. I'm going to comment it on on a good job. Let's see if it uh, understands. So it seems to work very well. It has given me the regression line in the red color. It is telling me the regression, the, the R square value to be 1. It is uh, plotting the porosity on the x axis and the rho b on the y axis. I think it has done a quite a good job. In the upcoming videos, we'll see how ChatGPT responds to the last files coming from multiple wells. Thank you.